Right here, Wilcox here. Wanting to do my Lucky Fred review. I said uh, this show is awesome because it is. Let's continue on here. Say, uh, yeah, this show is amazing. Lucky Fred. Uh, silly show I found on the Tubi. Uh, dot com <laughs> internet site. Probably you can see clips of it on YouTube as well. Uh, yeah. So I'm gonna just uh, go and talk about this stuff. You go by the you know, go by what, what the um, PowerPoint presentation says. See on here is like the show is amazing. It stars three main characters: Agent Brianna Brains. She's like Kim Possible and the Hawk Betty put together. Mm-hmm. The Lucky Fred of the title. Mm-hmm. Who's like Ron Stuffle and mixed with a fraggle. <laughs> and the Annihilator. They call him Friday. Can I move him around? Can I move him around? Okay, 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 that's why. That's why. Okay. That's why he's right there. Okay, go. I can edit things as I talk. It's really cool. Here. He can transform into almost anything. He can transform into uh, Fred's mom. <laughs> the story is pretty simple. Friday was sent to Viana by her dad. But he accidentally imprinted on Fred instead. So Fred is the only one who can command him to transform. But Brianna can still ask him to fight the bad, bad aliens and stuff. Because they're friends as well as teammates. That is an awesome dynamic. And it leads to some fun stuff. There was an episode. There was an episode where Friday had to stop a meteor while looking like Fred's mom. That was awesome. The other kids are fun, but not as deep. I hope my experience is all good. I'm not liking what I'm feeling. <laughs> the heater's, heater's on. It's blowing air at me, but it doesn't feel like hot air. <laughs> the water. Yeah, yeah, we gotta, well, hopefully. Please don't have anybody. Let's get the The other kids are fun, but not as deep. Hopefully that stuff will catch up and becomes warmer as we go on. They're mostly one note or hang out in the background. Especially the adults are fun too, especially Brianna and Fred's parents. Mm. Mm-hmm. Miss Man, Brianna's robot mom was cute. Mm. She was, yeah. mm. and she was like talking. Basically, she she talks like, oh, yeah, it's like uh, it's like uh, well, you know, there was like a festival where you find books at, or and or roses for. Mm. Uh, your significant other, and she's like, books, mm, roses, mm, book, mm, roses. <laughs> she's a robot, so, <laughs> so it's like having uh, human, normal human speech now, so, so yeah, yeah. Mm. there was no talk of her real mom, though, mm. yeah, no, that's the issue, I, there was no talk, I don't remember hearing anything about Brianna's real mom, mm, at all, is this a final space situation, mm-hmm. you know? where the mom left when the, you know, when the kid was, when the kid was a baby, because mm-hmm. you know? that would be awesome, mm. So was the principal. Kind of is suspicious. <laughs> Whose relation to me on it could be very suspicious. But now they never they, that was ever explored. There was no talk of anything. She was just the principal. <laughs> you know, there was no talk. But she, you know, it could be interesting that way too. Mm-hmm. You know, you know. And this girl too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Main antagonist girl. Mm-hmm. Yeah. In fact, she's a big part of one of my favorite episodes. There's a fountain in their city where couples make things official. Oh, life feels better. And this girl, the only main chubby one, wanted to find a boy to go to the fountain with. One night, she hears a noise in her backyard and checks it out. She finds an alien that looks like a frog, and she tries to kiss it to see if it will turn into a prince. It beats her to the punch. And it is able to read her mind by biting her head. The next day, this cute guy shows up. And he only has eyes for her. So she prepares to meet him at the fountain, and her brother is there to get photographic evidence. He turns back into a frog and tries to read someone else's mind. <laughs> so, yeah. Rihanna and Friday capture him, and Fred decides to meet, this girl, meet the girl on the, at the fountain so he can explain what's going on. He gives the girl a note that's, that sa- that he says the frog boy wrote, apologizing for not telling her that he was move- he has moved away, but will always love her. Mm. This shows how awesome this kid is, because he knew Nora, the girl he was crushing on, would see him do this. Mm. Thankfully, she figured out what was really going on pretty quick. Mm. Pretty quickly. 
which makes it more annoying that she does not get much development. Oh. Seriously. She has so much potential. Yes, she is the girl that Fred is crushing on. Like Trixie Tang for Fred the Opera's. But the twist is that she likes him too. And there's that, that flower in book ceremony. He's able to finally give a flower, find a flower to give to the girl because he likes her now. So it's like, yeah. And eventually they go on a date. Eventually go on a date. Yeah, well, there's this renaissance thing that they went to. And it was all it was all fun. And the hilarity is too, of course, because it's like, oh yeah, you know, I I I'm I'm amazing. I'm awesome. You know, Friday's helping. It'd be amazing and awesome. You know, but he has to go and help help Rihanna with stuff with the fight aliens. So then it's like, oh no, you know, he's like, oh no, what do I do? This new game's coming out. I, I got this new this new game. She wants me to do this thing. I I can't do the thing. Like, I want to because, you know, you know, Friday's not here. What do I do? You know, and hilarity ensues. Eventually gets to the point where she's cool with him just being himself and, you know, hanging out with her. That's basically what she wanted, you know. She didn't want to, you know, him to try to do feats of skill to impress her. She she just wanted him to hang, wanted to hang out with her. So, yeah. Learns that lesson. It's really awesome. So why does it feel like he's constantly chasing her? But definitely there was interesting things, the continuity of their relationship. Because she's mostly stuck at the crush girl role. Whenever Fred does something nice, like she likes, she says, "I like boys who are nice." And when, when and when she first met Fred, that was fine. But after the dates they went on, she just says she likes what he did because she has chosen him to be her boyfriend over all the others. Which makes the last episode I saw more annoying. In that episode, Nora starts to crush on Fred's friend. I'm talking full on love hearts. You know? And it's like, what, what? The last episode I saw, you know, I was walk, watching them in order, okay, in the chronological order on the, on the, on the website. And then it it's like, this is the last episode, Snow Day, last episode. And you see, uh, you know, her, her crushing on this dude. And it's like, what? <clears throat> I, thought, I thought you guys already went on a date. So, like, you know, you and Fred already went on a date. So, like, you guys were, you know, pretty much official here. <clears throat> what are you doing? <laughs> you know? He's like, now this guy is cool, and he was telling her how he was helping people, but crushing on her, crushing on him, it was too far. I felt like she was being tempted to cheat. Mm. Okay, time to move on before I ran about this some more. Mm. Let's try ranking the enemies from least to greatest. I hated this guy. Mm. He had no depth, no good story arc, and he liked to be mean to our hero's friends. Mm. Yeah, it's another one of his friends right there. Yeah. So Percival is a silly, uh, mm. thing. A beatboxing kid who, who uh, he's a lot of fun. I'm a fan of his. I'm a fan of his. You know, that's basically his thing. You know, you have the uh, you know dude with the brown skin, who's basically the philanthropist. You know, and you have Sir Percival, who's the uh, silly hip hop hip hop type guy, who's just hanging out, not causing any trouble at all. But of course, the bully is like, yeah, I'm a bully, so <laughs> I'm just going to just be mean. <laughs> you know? Yeah, I'm bigger than you. <laughs> you know, just like, yeah, I'm, I'm a fan of yours. <laughs> you know. All he was good for was getting paid back at the end of the episode. You see, like, yeah, Fred, you know, the bully is about to punch Fred, but Fred's all cool because uh, playing around is happy, is um, all is, you know, not worried at all because he has uh, Friday transformed into a boxing, super powered boxing glove, <laughs> you know, um, and he's about to trip the dude <laughs> as well. So basically, probably uppercut that dude and then trip him and he'll fall over. And he'll never able to see it and he'll be like, ha ha ha, and he'll, he'll be disgraced. And, you know, the facial hasn't probably going to go. So, yeah, so. He has payback in the end. That's how it goes. Whenever he's, whatever episode he's, he's featured in, usually that's how it works. Simple. Not my favorite. <clears throat> but yeah, there you go. Let's see here. I like this guy a lot more. <clears throat> he's this cutie's brother. And he's a reporter for their school newspaper. So he was always trying to spy on Fred and Brianna to get some dirt on them. And boy, do they have some dirt. Yeah, because they hang out with aliens. They fight aliens. They hang out with aliens. You know, so it's like, yeah. Mm. They gotta be careful to keep their secret. Mm. Secrets about that. Him finding out that they fight aliens and stuff could cause major problems. Mm. So there are a lot of actually things we care about that could be lost if he succeeds. So stopping him is important. And sometimes our heroes have to save him and or his sister at the same time. And then there are these things. These eyes are not like the other enemies. 
They are monsters from deep inside the earth. And they're also a bickering married couple who just want to be left alone. That makes them even more fun. Mm. Speaking of creatures that can cause problems but aren't necessarily enemies. This there's this girl here. She was stuck up uh, she was a stuck up alien princess whose body order made people do whatever she wanted. Mm. She had like the Squidward tentacles. Mm. <laughs> and what she wanted to do was be waiting on hand and foot. Mm. That's all. Mm. Unfortunately, there are aliens that wanted more. Like these diaper potato things. Mm. They were looking for other beings to have playdates with. Mm. So they kidnapped the school's faculty and put them in diapers. Mm. It was like Deviant Art invaded the show for a while. Mm. And then the, on, on the other side of the spectrum is this thing. Mm. Our hero called him her egghead, and he, she, was the smartest enemy they faced repeatedly. Mm. He, she, even made a team of other aliens, enemies, our heroes had fought before to get revenge, including the diaper-wearing um, potato things. <laughs> so, yeah, see those guys? Yeah, they're right there. And I'm not happy that, that the playdate was broken, like, that a playdate was, like, uh, their, their playdate, you know, their, their, their playmates, you know, they want, they, the teachers were taken away, they could back to Earth, mm. and, you know, Dressed in normal clothes again. <laughs> so I'm like, yeah. Uh, I was okay with it. Oh, yeah. yeah, no. Yeah, I'm okay. I was okay with it because it's, uh, yeah, not, 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 it was weird. That was the weirdest thing in the episode, in the whole show, in my opinion. Just I'm like, huh. <laughs> very fan RT, <laughs> you know. You know. Comparison to, I can't wait about it, though, of course. <laughs> yeah. Uh, not, 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 as, not as crazy. <laughs> not as many don't do that moments. <laughs> he, she was a great villain. <laughs> yeah. She's a little flamboyant, but also cunning. Also, uh, this this villain well, was voiced by a woman, uh, very flamboyantly. But I don't know if the, the character was supposed to be male or female. It, 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 yeah. mm. Kind of an, an uh, androgynous, if you ask me. You know, mm. so, you know what's that? That's why I go he or she. There's only one villain I like more. Mm. This robot was supposed to replace Friday, but was so upset to going by protocol as you turn on Rihanna toward the end of the episode. Mm. She has a final fight with our heroes, and it does a pretty good job. Mm. And she would. She was a superior model of what Friday is, and she was programmed with all the tactics that Brianna's agency uses against their enemies. Mm. Imagine her working with Egghead. Mm. <laughs> whatever that, whatever his name is. Mm. Like, dang. That would be amazing. But she was captured by the grabbing arms inside the trash compactor on the jump planet they fought on. And she was never seen again. Mm. What a waste. I have to work my drawings. Yes, I do. Other than that, the show is great. And because of our, it is because of our hero's relationship dynamic. They may have their differences, but they act like each other enough to try and figure things out. I'm here with Alcoholics, and man, this is longer than I thought. But it's good practice for my spoiler-filled Snyder Cut review. Oh, gee, how long is that going to be? Oh. I guess I'm going to find out. Check me out on YouTube and DeviantArt.